The mountains have been busy making their own weather, big and tough looking. I'm planning on flying home around it, stay away from the worst of it. A commercial flight leaves Mammoth Lakes, and I'll be taking off soon too, but I'll be lower and slower. Local showers, miserable weather for the west where Mammoth Mountain is. It's a few minutes after takeoff. The land below is actually the flood of lava and pumice left over from an ancient volcano that blew itself up. Mammoth Creek cut that deep gash in the earth below through all that. We're still climbing and the land is falling as we head south. To the left, the White Mountains, peaking greater than 14,000 feet. Below, the eastern California town of Bishop. Clearing skies to the south is good news, but there's more to it than that. This is the Owens Valley, called the Land of Little Rain. But let me tell you, it's got wind and turbulence and spades. The Sierra Crest is to the right, a giant wall of cloud-shrouded granite. Those big mountains and the heavy winds blowing at them are making for one nasty, bumpy ride. These are the Alabama hills, vastly older than the surrounding mountains, but now they're just the time-worn bones of the original ancient range. Whoa! Another big jolt. This pushed us up to over 11,000 feet. The BSI is showing a climb of more than 1,500 feet per minute. It was pegged at 2,000 for a bit before that. Okay, finally, some smooth air up here at 12,000 feet. Now we're high enough and the air is smooth enough. We're ready to head over the mountains. From here, we'll take the most direct route home and cut through the Sierra Crest over a low spot called Alantia Gap. But there's still lots of tall and rugged mountains below left for the rest of the trip. Beneath us now is the forested backcountry called the Kern Plateau. Behind us to the north is Menachee Meadows, 9,000 feet elevation and as pretty as can be. Sunshine above and a broken layer of clouds below. This is what we call an undercast. In the background, the sky sorts itself out into middle and upper layers. Each layer shows us the boundary of different bodies of air. This is a sun dog, a kind of bright rainbow caused by sunlight shining through ice crystals. And more interesting clouds over there, lenticulars, meaning lens-shaped, from layers of air smoothly bent up and let down again. With the high Kern Plateau behind us and the Kern Valley coming up, the character of the land and sky changes yet again. Below, a greater variety of landforms, mountains, desert valleys, and riparian forest. In the sky, the clouds are flatter and thinner, telltales of yet smoother air. Isabella Lake, shining golden in the sun, gathers the waters of most of the southern Sierra. In the distance, another mountain range called the Greenhorns bounds the west side of the valley. As we continue southbound, we come into the region where the Sierra Nevada meets the Tehachapi Range. The area is characterized by a series of passes, gaps, and large mountain basins that ease the flow of air and weather between the Great Central Valley to the west and the Mojave Desert to the east. Powerful and steady winds that are funneled through here are captured on the east side of Tehachapi Valley and their energy converted to electricity 
by those massive wind turbines in the distance. We can see them clearly from here, though they're more than 20 miles away, because many of them are more than 300 feet tall. The sky takes on golden hues and alabaster textures as the day grows late and it only gets prettier by the mile. There's just another 20 minutes of flight left before landing in Camarillo, but there's still many mountains and valleys to cross. A wavy layer of clouds becomes an ocean, and the mountaintops of the Ventura County backcountry become sky islands. This close to home, it should be familiar territory, but now it looks like an exotic place I've never seen before. The clouds have broken and Camarillo Airport comes into view. Flying above the cloud layer has kept me higher than usual, so I'll drop down into the clearer skies near the coast to lose altitude before heading back to the landing pattern. This flight from Mammoth to Camarillo was just under two hours, but it was so varied and pretty that it seemed much quicker. Maybe only about as long as this film. Well, I certainly enjoyed it and I hope you did too. Thanks for coming along.